Hi, I'm Tom from Financial Edge, and I'm an ex-investment banking analyst. Welcome to our PowerPoint for Banking Masterclass. So what you might not already know is that as an investment banking junior, you're going to be spending most of your time on PowerPoint, which we use for pitch books and marketing materials. Now, when we join, we're not the most proficient users of PowerPoint. So in this video series, we're going to be running you through some best practices, how to build a company profile from scratch, and we're going to teach you some shortcuts along the way. To kick off, here are eight best practices of PowerPoint in investment banking. The margin for error is so high if you don't follow these, so pay attention. Number one is always use this format when saving files. This will avoid duplication and getting confused between different file versions. Number two is when you're handling sensitive data, confidential data, make sure that you save this in the firm's private side folder, which restricts access to the deal team alone. Number three, always use your firm's color palette and font across pitch books. You want to ensure consistency across presentations sent to clients across the board. Number four is never use a mouse unless you really have to. Trust me, you'll become much more proficient in PowerPoint in the long term if you're familiar with shortcuts and you can navigate your way through these. Number five, is always save Excel source backups. Trust me, this will make your life so much easier when a senior needs to check your work and you know exactly where the figures are coming from. Number six, always check spelling, grammar, formatting, and alignment after each slide iteration. Attention to detail is crucial in investment banking. And trust me when I say you do not want seniors giving you comments on minor formatting, checking the alignment of logos and footnotes. So number seven is if you're working on the same pitch book with a colleague, it's much more efficient if you're working on just one or two slides to save a rider, which is a separate copy of that deck. For you to work and progress with that rider, send that back to the associate holding the master version and for him to copy across that content into this master version of the file. And then number eight is know the difference between an outline, a shell and a skeleton. This will help you to structure the pitch book in the first place. Before we delve in, I would thoroughly recommend you to check out Financial Edge Training's online course content. Financial Edge are a top financial training provider and teach analysts and associates from the top four investment banks in the world. The Business Toolkit is a comprehensive course that covers Outlook, PowerPoint, Word and Excel, and it's gonna make you much more productive and proficient at your job, saving you countless hours. Right now, for this month alone, you can save 25% off the Business Toolkit using Toolkit 25 discount code. For more details, check out the link down below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to put together a company profile. This is something you'll often be asked to put together by your VP or associate as an analyst. And the context is that this forms part of a pitch book for a client when assessing various opportunities, maybe for acquisition purposes. So taking a look at the slide layout, we can see a four quadrant format adopted. Now this is universally used across most investment banks. Starting with the company overview in the top left hand side, this entails a few bullets as to where the company is based, when it was founded, who is the management team, and more importantly, what activities did the company perform and how did they generate revenue? The key financials consists of a table showing the company's historical accounts and, if available, the forecast according to either brokers or the management. The geographic footprint consists of a map in the bottom left hand side showing where the company is based or where the company has operations. Lastly, the product and services offering usually consists of a few images or snapshots showing a few examples of what the company does in terms of its sales. So let's get straight into the company profile. If we enter the text box for the company overview, let's start by a few bullets. So let's say when the company was founded, by who, and a quick line on what is it that they actually do as a company. Next, let's write a line on where the headquarters are based and where it operates in terms of various countries or geographies. And lastly, let's also include the number of employees in the company. Next, as part of a new point, we need to include the various business activities. 
So in the case of financial edge, it could be financial training, it could be online courses. Let's leave these points blank. As you can see, we're using square brackets in this case. The reason we're doing this is because it's very easy to look up using the control F function for a square bracket, and then we can go back and fill in the data where needed later. So moving on to the second part of our profile, let's make a start on the key financials table. Using shortcuts, let's create a table. So the shortcut here is Alt N T, and then using the arrows on the keyboard, we can select the number of rows and columns we want to use. As you can see, when we enter the financial year end December in pound millions at the top left hand side, the font is definitely not the right size here. So if we hit Alt H F S, we're into the font size, and if we use 10, as you can see, this now fits within the table without being too large. On the right hand side in the top row, let's enter the years, financial years, for which we're going to be entering the data. So from 2018 actual all the way through to 2021 actual, the latest set of accounts. So you may use various line items. In this particular case, we're just gonna use revenue and EBITDA, and it's also important to show the percentage revenue growth over time and the EBITDA percentage margin. Remember to italicize these percentage figures as it will be easy to differentiate between actual figures and calculated percentages. Next, let's move on to the geographic footprint quadrant in the bottom left hand side. So for this, we're gonna need a map. We've already got this prepared actually in a separate slide for convenience. And as you can see, this is actually an editable object which we've downloaded from the internet. And the benefit of this is we can select any given country which we want to highlight and then shape fill this. So in this case, we've shape filled the United Kingdom in a dark blue color. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is select the full object, control C and then control V to paste this across. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to resize this because it's an object rather than an image. So let's hit control X to cut this object and then right click, select paste as image and we're now going to be able to crop this. Again, you can use the right click and select the crop function and adjust this manually. Once we've cropped this, let's resize it and move it into the relevant area of the slide. So again, we can do this by holding shift and then left arrow key to reduce the size. And then using the mouse, let's crop this a little bit further to make sure it's in the perfect positioning and it's well aligned with the left hand side of that quadrant. Next, let's create a legend to go with the map. So Alt N S H and then select the shape, hit enter for a rectangle. And you're gonna to have to draw this with your mouse. Now, the first thing we're gonna to want to do is actually get rid of the outline. You can see there's a dark blue outline on this shape. So we're gonna go Alt H S O and then N for no outline. And then next we want to ensure that the color of this legend matches the color of the highlighted geography. So in order to get that dark blue, we're going to go Alt H S F for shape fill and then hit the E button for eyedropper and then using the mouse, hover over the color we want and hit click to select. And then finally, let's add a text box to show what we actually mean by this color. So Alt N S H select text box and begin writing country of operations. So again, the text is too large. So Alt H F S to select the font size, uh, switch it to whatever you deem fit. Um, and there we have it, we've readjusted the font so it's much smaller and it fits better. And then let's make sure that we align that with this rectangle legend. So that's Alt J D and then A A M to align middle. And let's shift that down a bit so it's taking up a bit of the space. Again, we can fill this and complete it with more details, but for now, we're going to leave this geographic footprint as it is. Lastly, let's complete this product offering quadrant in the bottom right hand side. So this will entail a few pictures of some of the products Financial Edge offers. So we've got a few of these already prepared in a separate slide here. And as you can see, we've used a few of the online learning modules here, which we're just going to copy across using Control C and then Control V into our slide. So as you can see, this is all pasted across. However, these are taking up slightly too much space and it's overlapping with the financial edge logo in the bottom right hand side. So let's select all of these images and then hold shift and then left arrow key to reduce the image size. So that's definitely the right size. However, we're going to need to move these pictures up a bit to use more of the space. 
So holding shift and selecting all of these images, we can move these up with our mouse. And if we want to incrementally move these up and down, we can hold control and then up or down arrow keys. Zooming in using control and then the scroll button, we have a much closer look for alignment purposes. And let's move across these top pictures so that they're much closer together. Now, in order to align the bottom with the top picture, instead of doing this manually, let's select both images, go Alt J P for picture format, and then A A and then R to align right. We're gonna do something very similar for these right-hand side pictures, holding both of those pictures down, Alt J P A A L to align left. Now, that's a much closer fit and as you can see, they're all well aligned. And the last thing we want to do is to ensure that any alternative text is removed. So to do this, right click, hit edit alt text, and then just hit the backspace to delete that. The reason for this is if we do not, and we save this as a PDF file as we usually do in banking, if we were to hover the mouse cursor over this object in the PDF file, the alternative text would appear. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video and you found the tips helpful, remember to smash that like button, leave a comment, and don't forget that that 25% code off the business toolkit is for this month only. So check out the details down below.